The Democratic Alliance has for long been the envy of other political parties in South Africa. Growing from a marginal less than 2% in the 1994 election, it is now the official opposition with over 22% in the national election in 2019. Now, the party in the recent past has come under scrutiny for its ill treatment of its black leaders, leading some to argue that it is purging its black leaders. Welcome to Know Your Politics. My name is Lubom Nyobe, and in this episode, we discuss the Democratic Alliance and its troubled history with racism. The party obviously denies that there's any truth to the purging of its black leaders. Every member of the Democratic Alliance enjoys the, the same equal rights as any other member of the Democratics, whether they are black, whether they are white, Indian or colored. The party denies purging its members and says disciplinary charges against others are not meant to intimidate them. While the party denies that there's any truth to these allegations made by these senior leaders who resigned from the party, the prominent resignations leave very little confidence in South Africa that this is the party to govern in the future. Well, some analysts, such as Prince Machele, argue that the racism within the party is part of its DNA. So from the beginning, it was a white project. So the white people ask themselves, how do we organize ourselves to respond to the political changes that have taken place and to defend our interests in relation to the black political party that is ruling South Africa? That was the beginning. That's the genesis of the Democratic Alliance. Prince Machele's analysis of the Democratic Alliance may seem a little bit crass and simplistic, but it is a party that has over a number of occasions positioned itself as a party of white interest. Back in 1999, under the leadership of Tony Leon, the party launched its Fight Back campaign, picking a fight with the government of national unity led by Nelson Mandela. Now, this move served to further isolate black voters as it positioned the party as a party that was okay with the race relations of apartheid that left black voters without any power. However, things have changed, and in 2015, the party elected its first black leader in Musi Maimane. I simply don't agree with those who say that they don't see color. Because if you don't see that I'm black, then you don't see me at all. Then on cue... It should come as no surprise that some within the party attempted to erase Musi Maimani's identity as a black person. Recently, the party came out of an elective conference where it decided that race should not play a significant role in redress policies in South Africa. Here is DA Head of Policy, Gwen Gwenya, explaining the party's position on race. So people believe false things about each other based on people's skin color or whatever it is in your mind that race constitutes of. It doesn't make it real just because people do bad things on that basis. So we will always fight the horrible things that people do on the basis of the false belief in race. Just four years after being elected as the party's leader, Musi Maimani resigned with allegations of racism during the rounds. In the space of just three months, Two other senior leaders, including Athol Trollope and Herman Mashaba, resigned, also alleging that the party was not in line with its values of one South Africa for all. The election of Helen Ziller as federal chairperson of the party was seen as another move of the party regressing into uh, racism. However, the story is a little bit more complex than this, as Musi Maimane lost the party at least 2% of its base in the 2019 election. I led the party in, I guess, two national elections and two local government elections. And in every election, the party got more votes than the previous election. And that is a very key test of the leader's efficacy. So if, you, if the party goes backwards by 475,000 votes, that is a leadership call, if you like. Just four years after being elected as the party's leader, Musi Maimane resigned alleging racism. In just three months, three senior leaders, including Athol Trollope, Musi Maimane and Herman Mashaba, resigned claiming that the party was no longer aligned with their values of one South Africa for all. The party's introduction of Helen Zille into the party's leadership was yet another sign of the party's regression into racism. The DA is well on its way on the path of self-destruction, and I think it's best that we don't disturb them. But I hate to say to Musi that I told you so, but I'm going to say it anyway. 
So gone are the days of Musi Maimane, Patricia DeLille and Herman Mashaba at the leadership of the party. Now this party recently elected a new leader in John Steenhazing who brought along with him a newly elected leaders who were overwhelmingly white with only one senior leader of the party being a black woman in Refilwe Nteke. What should we make of this election? Here's an analyst telling us what we should make of the future that the party is taking. The Democratic Alliance is uh, a lot more concerned about its traditional base, which is a white conservative base um, that they, of course, lost in the last election to the Freedom Front Plus. So is the Democratic Alliance a racist party? Well, I don't have the answer to that. You have to decide for yourself. But what I do know for sure is that the weakening of the Democratic Alliance means a weakening of the Democratic project in South Africa. The one thing that South Africa needs the most is a fierce opposition, whether it is in the Democratic Alliance, the EFF, or any of the other political party. South Africa needs fiercely competitive elections to make sure that those in government are held accountable. Thank you for watching Know Your Politics. My name is Lubom Nyobe.